Bloody hell. Sodding, blimey, shagging, knickers, bollocks. Oh, God. I'm English. Welcome to the Nancy tribe. You don't suppose you and I... We're not related, are we? There is a ruggedly handsome resemblance. Uh, and you do inspire a, um, a particular feeling of familiarity and disappointment. Older brother? <laughs> Father. Oh, God, how I must hate you. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 109 of Revisiting Sunnydale. I'm Camila. I'm Marcella. Stop killing black people. Stop killing black people. <laughs> That's, it's difficult for me to sit here and record this podcast today because of the state of the world as of right now. Um, I thought about it. Shit's fucked up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought about it, and ultimately I came down with, we need some kind of levity. Mm -hmm. And not a distraction, but it was twofold for me. One, we have a platform that we can talk about. Shit's fucked up. Just stop. Exactly. And number two, our listeners depend on us to give them some levity and... An hour of escape, Mm -hmm. I would would wager to say. Um, Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and it works well for me as well because you know mm-hmm. I can't sit in those feelings for very long. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, you know, especially like pandemic and protests. Like, come on, and just the murdering, the murdering of black and brown people is too much. I would really, uh, first of all, I would I just <laughs> want y'all to listen and don't get this little Buffy the Vampire Slayer stuff twisted and think that I'm one way when I'm not. Right. So uh, um, I am still first and foremost a black woman and that is go- that is who I am in the world. That is who I always have been, always will be. That shit don't change. No. And um, until y'all non-black and brown people stop seeing us as a threat, as a problem, as an inconvenience, then, you know, shit's going to still be the same. So educate yourselves. Don't, don't ask your black acquaintances. And I say acquaintances Mm -hmm. because if they were actual friends, you wouldn't need to be taught and educated about how to go about your, your life in a non-racist way. So, um, you know, educate yourselves, figure it out. Aunt Google will help you find the resources you need. In Uncle order to- YouTube's there to oh, show you yes. some videos. Exactly. There's plenty of books, literature, material. Because why? Why is there so much material? Because this shit is not new. Mm-mm. No. And the, what? thankfully, it is June 3rd when we're recording this, which mm-hmm. is important to know because you know, for the past week, it's been about Poor Mr. Floyd and what happened to him. But as of this morning, this shit is not a U.S. issue anymore. Mm -hmm. There are riots happening in London. There Mm -hmm. are riots happening in Paris. Mm -hmm. It's not a United States issue. It is a global issue. Exactly. The same same fervor you felt towards fighting COVID Mm -hmm. put put all that same energy into fighting racism. Mm -hmm. I guess that's that's where I shall leave that. That's the state of the world. That's where we live. Right. It exactly. was hard enough. Like, I can't even imagine the things that swirl through your head now that you have a child. Yeah. Yeah. You know? it's. I just, I mean, I, to be completely transparent, I cry randomly. Mm-hmm. It's because, I mean, it's, and it was. How do you explain it? You know, right. children oftentimes are colorblind until they're taught otherwise. Exactly. And it's not always in the home that they're taught. We got to think about the media and Mm -hmm. teachers and other kids. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So make sure you have you're having conversations and and doing the right thing right by your children by teaching them not to grow up to kill ours. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Yep. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. Set that aside. We'll put a pause on it. All right, we'll go ahead and move on over to Sunnydale, and um, where some also random fucked up <laughs> shit is happening. <laughs> Which 
I mean, this is one of my more. This is one of my favorite episodes. This- I, wait, before we I do get to before I do get we get into this, I just want to take a, a hot second to um, applaud the women over at Buffering the Vampire Slayer. I think is the name of the podcast. Who made it abundantly clear where they stand? That they stand for you know anti racism, and um, they also are offering they they're offering some sort of like reading learning group or something where they they've all like sworn to educate themselves basically on the subject and you know they've got a list of books that they have um put together on the subject on the topic um which is awesome and variety also has a list on twitter of some things that people can check out and i like the phrase anti-racist because (sighs) i'm all i'm an anti-racist for everybody just right exactly we gotta start we got to start with black and brown people, but no racism at all. I don't want any of it. Like, I don't have time for any of it. Right. Right. Except for my dislike of cats, because that will just never go. <laughs> cats can go to hell. Cats can go. <laughs> They're the gatekeepers of hell, and they can stay there. <laughs> Except for some of our listeners' cats, because they are kind of cute. Yes, I just don't. But for I don't need them but, in my house. I, yeah, I don't need them in my house. I ain't got time for cats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so season six, episode eight, Tabula Rasa. I love this episode. November thirteenth, two thousand one, written by Rebecca Kirshner, directed by David Grossman. While trying to find a way to make Buffy forget about her afterlife experience, Willow inadvertently casts a spell that erases everyone's memories. Guest stars Amber Benson as Tara. Raymond O'Connor as Teeth the Sharkhead and Michelle Branch uncredited. And I'd like to say, well, I got I we usually get the summaries from IMDB. Mm-hmm. That sentence could have been needs, not should have, needs to be worded a little differently. She didn't inadvertently cast a spell. No, no. <laughs> she casted a spell that inadvertently erased everyone's memory. Exactly. It was only supposed to be Tara and Buffy, but right. it, it, she got everybody. Right. So, yeah, she, she knew what she was doing. She was she casting spells. She spell. was doing she just, inadvertently. Mm-mm. Like the net was just cast a little too wide. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so Willow. Oh, <clears throat> oh Willow. <laughs> but that's not where we start. We start no. with, so it was Spike being a stage five clinger. Stage five clinger, but can we mention Buffy's like sweater jacket? I kinda want it. But why is it a sweater on top of a sweater? That yeah, always I... <laughs> pick one. <laughs> you need two sweaters. They do go very nice together, but like, unless that be that hot. Sweater... Yeah, unless that turtleneck sweater was sleeveless. That's the right. only thing that I can see. <laughs> But it's, otherwise she's just a hot pocket and I, I know but it isn't a cute outfit but um, it is i just kind of wish one of those things had been a, of different material <laughs> <laughs> but, spikes back to his villain outfit is normal right for now and <laughs> but he is clinging he's got questions about that guess he just wants to <laughs> talk it out <laughs> oh, but you know because there was okay. some rising music and rising music <laughs> Buffy, what does it all mean? What are we going to do now? And she is like, she's she doesn't want to talk about it. She doesn't want to think about it. She's like very much trying to forget about it. She's rude about it. So it didn't mean shit. Don't talk about it. Ain't going to happen again. Erased. <laughs> Delete. It meant nothing to me whatsoever. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, shucks, Buffy, but why? <laughs> <laughs> we could be so good together. <laughs> you just don't know, girl. Come on. And- then they're interrupted by what I'm personally going to call the silliest fucking demon <laughs> that has ever graced so hokey this show. So hokey. I'm like, it's literally a shark head. And that's why I call him Teeth the Shark Head. Because he has a, <laughs> he's name. got like, no, his regular, his, his actual character name is just Teeth. <laughs> Oh, I called him Teeth the Shark Head. Oh my God. Because he's got weird hands, but then the rest of him's human. Like, as we all wonder, I want to know what's going on down there. Like, what? what I, you're wearing I, pants. So what? Yeah. And I also like, how are you living on land? Right. Where were you? How are you breathing? I don't understand it. Like, we get it. He's a loan shark. Oh, <laughs> on, the really on the on nose. Really on the nose, guys. <laughs> really on the nose. It's so yeah. annoying, too. It's just. This is literally one of the worst creatures that have ever graced mm-hmm. the show. And I meant to look up like, who no Raymond O'Connor whatsoever. is. No, none. They ran out of time and they were like, oh shit, we forgot about the... Make it a lone... Sh- He's a lone shark of kittens. 
<laughs> Fuck it, make him a shark. Which that even doesn't make sense. Like, what do shark, sharks? What? Do, what? Sh- How do you even know what a cat about, is? Right. Sharks don't know about kittens. Right. <laughs> And, and why I, so like hell bent on it like getting the payback time is what turns kittens into cats dude <laughs> what the fuck if you're just eating them you're still that they still <laughs> <sighs> and who was the first demon that was like cats is currency guys i don't have any money it, i know it, we're deep in this game of poker uh, but i got this kitten <laughs> oh okay all it's, right Really doesn't make any sense because like we were saying in the last episode their cats are a dime a dozen mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's they mm-hmm. there's no real worth on cats it's like especially it's, i it's mean like somebody coming at you for like because you owe them like 40 pennies like, right they got go shake open your like tip over your couch you probably got them in there <laughs> <laughs> kick open the side of a dumpster at least 10 will <laughs> fall out unfortunately <laughs> because people are awful and they just throw their cats away <laughs> And street cats, you know, street cats multiply. <sighs> Raymond O'Connor, you have seen a thousand times. I'm going to hold up his picture so you can see him. Oh, this guy. He's like, that oh. is T. He looks, he, you know, oddly enough, he just looks like that shark, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, he does. <laughs> guy, yeah, like, absolutely. I would, if I were to uh-huh. see him outside of this context, he'd be like, you know what? He reminds me of that lone shark on Buffy. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, he had to put that hot ass, uh, that must have been horrible. Head on. At least it's because it's probably not makeup. It's probably just a head. Probably. That they I'm put sure. on duct tape to his neck it's and went about their business. Suffocating. That poor man. I hope he was so paid well. The gang is talking about Buffy's bomb from Once More with Feeling that she was in heaven. Everyone feels real bad. As they should. As and they should. Even Willow admits that she was selfish. They were all selfish because mm-hmm. they didn't think about where she could have been. You know what else they didn't think about? Having this conversation with her. Yeah. I don't why know. Are why y'all sitting around behind her back talking about this? Like seriously, this this is a great like this, still, you're still <laughs> planning her fate without her. Right. Like, this is what guys you in this mess before without thinking mm-hmm. about actually thinking about Buffy and what she wanted and what she what she may have wanted at that time period or where she was for real, for real. And now now that she's told you what what happened and where she was. And now we're still let's go talk in the corner about yep. her and what. We and can guess who else did this to her? Oh, Joyce and Giles back when they were planning her life without her, scheduling yep. her minute to minute. Everyone seems to say it. They know what's best for Buffy. Except to ask Buffy. Uh huh. No Which wonder no wonder she, she acts the way she does. Right, exactly. No wonder she's such a bitch most of the time. Uh-huh. Like, nobody's listening to her for real. So and in their conversations back and forth, Willow comes up with the bright idea that she knows this spell. Surprise! Just no figures. She knows the spell that makes Buffy forget all about heaven. Why didn't you know a spell to figure out exactly where Buffy was when she was dead? Right. And number two, why um, why do you want to make her forget that? Right. It was a wonderful experience that she had. Exactly. You want to make her forget something. Make her forget the trauma of clawing her way out of the coffin. Right. When she woke up. Make her forget that. Right. Or how about you make you not decide what her emotions are going to be and let her decide how she's going to feel. Yeah. Let's just talk about it. Let's talk about Let's just sit there with Buffy and like have a real heart to heart conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, look, we're sorry. We fucked up. Like, yep. for real, royally. And, you know, there's really no way we can make it better. But we can try to talk to you more and figure mm-hmm. out what you really want. And um, Sarah, Sarah kind of goes off on Willow, like, in the sweetest possible way. <laughs> like, but in the way that Xander and Anya know to get the hell out of the room. Right. <laughs> like Tara, like, lightweight snaps mm-hmm. in, the, in the terror way that she does. She went mom. <laughs> She went mom like. No. She where you're like, oh, this, time, this wow. is a grown conversation. I need to, <laughs> the grown folks need to talk. I got to go. <laughs> excuse me. I would like to excuse myself from the table. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and she just starts to, and she talks to Will and tells her about how she, she's using too much magic. And, you know, she doesn't even think about the ways to actually do something like a normal person. She just knows a spell, wants to tape a spell on it. And, you know, Willow not hearing her is just like, I just want to help people. And Tara's like, no, nah, that's not exactly what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You're just helping yourself. And finally, Tara drops the, I don't think this is going to work. She's Bob. so sad when she says it. I know. 
And she tells her flat out, she's like, I know you use that spell on me. Yeah. And instead of apologizing, oh. you know. I just didn't want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're good. We're yeah. Up. You know what? I'm just, you know, I'm going to go now. And, you know, and still, and even when uh, Tara explains to her that it was a violation of her mind, especially like how hurt she was after what happened with Glory, she still doesn't really apologize. It's yeah. still just like ugh, a violation, violate you. That's the, and it's oh she's super defensive and she you know she's saying you're doing it the way you're doing everything you're trying to fix everything to your liking even me ooh. 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 that's cut the check this is we're done <laughs> yes <laughs> we're done <laughs> like you can keep all my stuff i'm not coming home exactly just... i already got a go bag I, I mean i packed out i packed up two weeks ago you just didn't notice because you haven't been paying attention <laughs> I actually don't live there anymore. I just thought I would tell you <laughs> kindly. <laughs> but, but she's not the only one getting bad news. Well, also, well, but they come to the decision like Willow is like really, she's like begging and pleading and and she's like, hey, I can go 30 days without doing any magic. And Tara's like, <laughs> okay, we'll do a week. <laughs> and she's like, okay, cool. So they come to this agreement. You know, a week. Side, one yeah. week. One week. Seven whole days. That's mm-hmm. it. And on the flip side, Giles is trying to break up with Buffy. He sure is. <laughs> and like the most Phoebe Buffet way, like sat her down. <laughs> <laughs> Had a nice long, he was going to hug her, I think. <laughs> right. There was probably some tea brewing. I don't know. Right? <laughs> but instead, she flips purpose. out like a little baby. How do you, why could you leave? How can you leave now knowing what I've been through? Like, Buffy. <laughs> you've been back like a month you could i mean talk to him about this at any time i understand not telling willow and xander and anya and tara oh yeah. i get that but not telling him yeah because that was that was a poor decision because he had nothing to do with bringing right. back and he was very much against it anyway right he well, could have maybe helped out and talked, but no you just wanted him to do all your little dirty work mm-hmm. like your substitute dad which he is not which is this is why this the only reason why she wants him still hanging around mm-hmm. so he can write checks and chastise Dawn. Right. That's, that's all she. Uh, she yeah. It's just so she's really like pouty about the whole thing, and he's trying to explain to her like basically, look, I am a grown ass man. Y'all are grown ass kids. Now. Right. You are grown <laughs> people. I, I got my own shit to deal with i didn't want to come back to this bitch in the first place right i mean technically i'm your high school librarian when you graduated my responsibility for xander and willow was done (laughs) exactly because of the council i was responsible for buffy but when i quit or got fired that was done too i should have just left right i should have been gone a long time ago but no so the very next morning the very next morning like not even a day the next day like it probably hasn't even been 12 hours nope (laughs) nope tara and dawn are ready to go because it's time like giles called a meeting and for whatever reason willow is not ready yet she's still in her towel right out of the shower and they're like basically out the door which i don't understand what was going on but i guess there's only one bathroom in that house and so i guess (laughs) (laughs) like it just seems lopsided like how Uh how she's so not ready and how they're ready like was she fucking around right (laughs) like she was just sitting somewhere in her towel like i gotta wait till they leave gotta wait till they leave all right so she uh they they leave. She's like, I'll catch up with you. And then she literally does a spell to get dressed. Yeah. To change her clothes. How does spell that, number one. Like, how long would that have actually taken you to go ahead and dry off and put some clothes on? Right. But that's not the only thing she's up to. Mm-hmm. So more than likely she was waiting around so she could pull out her crystal and do another spell, cast a spell to make Buffy and Tara forget. Yep. Except in a very unwillow like fashion, she just leaves the bag of supplies sitting there. Which is dumb. Like how are which you is dumb. Is so not sneaky. Right. How are you gonna explain that when you got home? Right. So, you know, as things happen, one of the embers falls out of the fireplace and sparks up the whole bag. What a dick. She's so lucky it didn't burn down the house. Right? <laughs> I don't know how it didn't actually. If it was like it was a pretty big 
it would have just kept spreading like around been, the house. But like the, the whole place is it's wood. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. But the group is gathered at the magic box because Giles has an announcement. He's trying to break up with everybody now. <laughs> mm-hmm. But before he can do that, <laughs> Spike. Spike comes in. A blaze. <laughs> do you really? You've lived in this town for how long in sunny California? Do you really not have a better mode of transport to get around during the day? Right. And we find out later that there is literally like a a doorway or something. There is a there's a tunnel. There's like right. tunnels are right underneath this the store and apparently there's a way to and from them through the store <laughs> which he's used before on right. halloween right to like sneak in and steal stuff so why are you in the broad ass daylight with the bright blazing sun want to go take take a walk with a maybe blank? he was afraid that the lone sharks would be in the sewers because they're vampires maybe maybe but i i highly doubt they'd be out in the day looking for him right <laughs> Because, as any self-respecting vampire knows, like, why are you even out in the day? Why are you up? Shouldn't you be asleep? Like, I've been, I'm seeing that you don't sleep at all, Spike, because you're just up and about all day, mm-hmm. all night, doing all sorts of things. He rolls in in this secondhand store suit, I'm assuming, <laughs> <laughs> which looks like it was probably, it could have been his when he was made a vampire. <laughs> It's so tweed and this, it's it's very Giles is what it is. It is. <laughs> and they get back to the main topic which Giles is going to leave. And you know, Giles is kind of pussyfooting his way around saying it and Buffy's just being a a cow and you no, know, just tell them the truth, tell them now, tell them you're leaving me. She's just pretty bad. Easy. <laughs> Everyone's Man, uncomfortable. I'm trying, to do, I'm trying to do something here. <laughs> right? You're making everybody way more uncomfortable than they need to be. She starts to storm off and, you know, everybody is... Well, like, the only people that really react to him saying that he's leaving is uh, Xander. He kind of freaks out a little bit. And Anya, but she's more concerned with the fact that, you know, fine, are you leaving for real this time? Because... <laughs> <laughs> that poor shopkeeper's heart. She can't take it. <laughs> And then Buffy starts to stomp off, and then uh, Willow takes his time to try to apologize to Buffy, and Buffy doesn't really want to hear it at this moment. She's really fed up. She's like, everybody's sorry. Everybody's so sorry. But nobody knows what it feels like. Right. Yeah, no, they don't. And then they all pass out. Yep. Everyone just drops. And they all wake up in very compromising positions. Oh, well, really? Well, it's... Xander and Willow are all snuggly wuggly. And uh Anya and Giles wake up a little too close together. Giles is resting his head on her back. It's all you two <laughs> sleeping together, resting. <laughs> and Spike falls off of the <laughs> the countertop. Countertop because he got he was sitting on top of it, but he kinda collapsed on his side. But when they wake when they're all showing them all asleep he's like curled up on his side like he was having because you don't sleep you need to sleep <laughs> and that was probably the first time you'd slept in like a year right the first nap you've had <laughs> 365 days i need you to right? slow it down some so everybody so has like, no idea who they are <laughs> completely wiped <clears throat> and it's more just like personal memories wipe like they know what things are Right. <laughs> but they just don't know who they are or each other. They know they're male and female. <laughs> right. And um, what's her name? Willow is wearing Xander's. So this is another fun thing about this episode is that so nobody knows who they are. So they get the bright idea to check their check for IDs. And um, for whatever reason, Buffy doesn't carry a fucking wallet. I don't. Neither does Dawn. Which <sighs> I've always seen Dawn carry a purse around. Uh-huh. She should have a school, a high school ID. Right. She should at least have some kind of ID, a library card or something. Right. And neither one of them have like house keys or anything. Right. Which, so your house is just unlocked all the time. It's, okay. It's, I get too deep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but the, it's cute because obviously everybody, like they call him Giles and they call uh, Xander, Xander, but that's not, you know, what their government names are <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, Anya, to look at it, you wouldn't know what it is to 
put to how to really pronounce it. So Xander starts to call him. He sees that he's Alexander Harris. <laughs> they start calling him Alex, and you know Rupert Giles. So now it's Rupert, <laughs> and you know, and, and um, Anya. She's like, oh hey, it's I'm Anya. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> This thief, it's this cash register, so this paperwork has my name on it, so I must own this store. And, you know, Tara's cool. Willow, she giggles at her name. Dawn has a nameplate necklace, <clears throat> so she figures who she is. And um, <laughs> and Spike, because he's wearing his secondhand suit, he looks in, <laughs> in the label, and it says it's made for care, made with care for Randy. They figure <laughs> his name is Randy. And so basically this section, this whole entire time brings me to my burn of the week. It's everything that Spike says to Giles. Every single word. <laughs> Especially, well, and there's a weird thing that happens because the one thing that for some reason Rupert didn't know about himself was that he was British until he starts talking. Which I love and, he, <laughs> and he figures out he's British. And then Randy starts making fun of him, <laughs> calling him like a Nancy boy. And he's like, you Brits are always. And then he hears his own voice. <laughs> and he's he like, he he like, like sodding, but he's like sodding, blimey, sh- jaggers. <laughs> <laughs> but then they make a very strange leap. They decide that because they're both British, they must be related. Right. And so okay. I think I think Anya says father and son and mm-hmm. and Giles is like older brother. <laughs> I'm still young enough to get carded. <laughs> and Spike deduces that because of the amount of hate he feels towards him, he has to be his father. <laughs> right. Oh God, how I must hate you. <laughs> it's like and what's with the trollop? <laughs> Talk to mom, stepmom. <laughs> And he is horrified that his name is Randy Giles. <laughs> Which I knew there was a reason why I hated you. Randy <laughs> Giles? Why not just call me Desperate for a Shag Giles? <laughs> Randy Giles. I love it. Some of the best stuff ever. Oh, God. It's, it's, it is the best. It's my favorite. It's one of the reasons this makes like top 10 episodes across the seasons for me. Oh, yes. Because it's belly laughter, like absolute belly laughter. It's so fun. It just, <laughs> and just even like when Spike points out, he's like, I saw you two sleeping together. And just, <laughs> he just has this resting. Like, resting? <laughs> She's far too young for me. We were resting. <laughs> it's very strange, some of the uh, fashion choices that were made as well. I feel like Willow's outfit is very uncharacteristic of mm-hmm. her it's a lot of cleavage a lot of skin so much like, like in the, the upcoming scene like when they're down in the sewers i'm like i was like immediately like damn girl right you mean all of everything right <laughs> and then you've got anya which how many patterns are going on in her pink out like there could be leopard print there's polka dots i, I don't know what's going on but it hurts my eyes so much happening it looks like an optical illusion and then Dawn, Dawn, <laughs> she has this conversation with Buffy. She's talking about, you know, how scared she is. And she's like, it's okay. And they decide, Buffy decides that her name is Joan. Yes, she names herself. She names herself Joan. Now, when Dawn first saw her nameplate, she said, who mod? <laughs> because clearly it's upside down. It's clearly it's upside down. And when Buffy picks her name of Joan, Dawn kind of, goes ugh. <laughs> and Buffy gets real offended like are you ugh, my name <laughs> and they have this cute little back and forth and finally they're like oh wait a minute you think we're sisters again this is another I mean it's a true leap but again why it's do you still. just think that because you bicker right your sisters like yeah you don't know like you could just hate each other like right. just- <laughs> you're just some annoying kid with very shiny hair <laughs> right yeah, seriously. Like you could be just so, like I could work at. She could work at the store, and and Dawn's just this annoying brat that just keeps popping up. So you know, right? We don't know. <laughs> they decide they're gonna. Where are they going when they try to leave the magic box? But my favorite, one I of my favorite the, moments happens when they try to leave. I think the goal is to go to the hospital. Okay, that's right. Because they think since they don't have any idea who they are, they should go to the hospital. Right. Sure. So they, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So they do, they try to leave. They open the door and they're greeted by two vamps, by Sharky's, mm-hmm. Sharky's two vamp cronies or whatever and they all just freak out <laughs> it just, is the best freeze frame moment it is <laughs> ever they we should absolutely use it as the picture for this episode yeah. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> and they keep the vampires are yelling send out spike we want spike and they're like they want spikes what do we do with spikes where do we get spikes <laughs> And they're like, we want us and the slayer. We don't, there's the slayer. And they're like, they want to slay someone, a female someone. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that they're like, we're in a magic shop. Maybe we should use some of the things that are around them. Right. So they kind of go b- back and forth. And I think they, oh, wait a minute. We totally forgot right before this that they were going to, uh, my extra burn, like the more specific than everything that, <laughs> that that Spike says to Giles. Everything that Randy says to Rupert <laughs> in this episode <laughs> is when they do decide that they're leaving to go to the hospital. And uh, Randy is like, Dad can drive. He's bound to have some classic midlife crisis transport, <laughs> something red, shiny, shaped like a penis. <laughs> it's, it's pretty spot on about what Giles's car, what uh-huh. Giles is driving. <laughs> yep, he's got that red convertible. Yep. Hundred <laughs> mm-hmm. percent. Right. So, um, the, I think the vampires get in, and they all start to fight, and finally, like Jones, Slayer strength kicks in, and she starts to uh, attack, and she she gets gets a couple of them and mm-hmm. they all start to realize that Joan fancies herself the boss. So <laughs> Well what's great is if you if everyone should go back and watch that scene when they do break into the magic box because Nicholas Brendan's screaming is hilarious. And there are three separate instances in this scene where he just throws his hands up and screams. And then he <laughs> drops to his knees and starts saying something in Hebrew. Right. He, he tries to hit all the gods. <laughs> yes. in He's like, it's so funny. Here. I don't know who I am. <laughs> 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 it's so funny and they snatch up spike and he's like well here take your stupid sticks and he starts throwing stakes at them <laughs> but yes of course buffy's leadership skills kick in and she is thrilled with herself for being so strong and powerful yeah, i think i'm a superhero <laughs> and then sander passes out <laughs> so there's a couple just like weird things that happen in this episode on the personal side and it's that over the course of the episode willow and tara kind of have this weird cute little like they clasp onto each other there's a little flirtation that happens Mm. coming up in the sewers you can see that they're naturally drawn together Mm -hmm. what's also very apparent is that anya and xander are not right like they barely look at each other right or speak to each other is very telling of what happens in a couple episodes from now. This is that's interesting. Um, yeah, because I never even I never even thought about that. Like they not were, at all. They like like you said, they hardly even talk to each other. Right. And that's it's true. just a very interesting look that they were not meant to be together. Right. Exactly. Like it was just circumstance. I would mm-hmm. imagine that brought them together. Like that. Why did they even start dating? Because she wanted to go to the prom, and so she asked. Yeah. Xander she to go. Asked Xander. And Xander, like nobody else, has really given him the time of day at that point in time. Right. So he, he agreed. Fucked it up with Cordy. And um, and every time it was her pursuing him. When right. she came back at college, she just basically dropped trial and was like, we're going to do it. Yep. She wore him I down. Didn't... She became like an easy lay for him, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it was just something that was familiar to him. Mm-hmm. Which Buffy pointed out. In some episode or where she, he was trying to check her about Riley. Yeah. She's like, well, let's talk about Anya. Is she anything more than a convenience? Yeah. Burn. That's and then he goes and like word vomits all over Anya that he loves her, which do you or do you just feel bad about the fact that Buffy was right? Right. Exactly. So I don't think that Xander truly knew what being in love with someone meant. Right. And like it was a familiarity and a convenience or just he felt comfortable with her and that's mm-hmm. why he sta- stayed with her for so long. <clears throat> so now the gang has split up into three different parties. Buffy and Spike, 
Well, uh, Joan Randy. and Joan. Randy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Randy and Joan are off fighting the vampires. Anya and Rupert are going to stay at the magic box and protect the money and do some spells. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest <laughs> of the gang is fleeing through the tunnels. They're, right. <laughs> so now, they go, Randy and Joan go out to fight mm-hmm. the vamps and Sharky. And um, then Spike vamps out. Yep. And he's like, hey, or Randy vamps out. He's like, hey, I'm a superhero too. And Joan flips and runs. <laughs> And it's a whole thing, and he doesn't know what's happening. He's like, "What? Why is she? <laughs> Why did you go?" <laughs> and then she does end up later on, like jumping on him, and she's like, "Check the bumpies." She spends a lot of time on top of him. I'm just she saying, does. Like, especially this season, a lot. Like, like there's like she she tackles him, and she he she points out to him that he's a vampire, and then but she and she sits on like she's literally on like straddling him for this. Mm-hmm. And this whole thing, and he goes through this brilliant little synopsis of like what he could be. Like maybe he's a vampire with a soul who fights for the good, and he's trying to, and he's trying to redeem I hope himself. Helpless. <laughs> right? He steals <laughs> Angel's line. Right? He's basically giving himself Angel's biography, <laughs> and uh, Buffy's like, "That's so lame." <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. And I don't understand why after she has him check the bumpies, she doesn't get up. No. She continues to just sit on top of him. Right. Well, he examines what's happening. Mm-hmm. And there's, but there's a whole thing. And he starts talking about how, you know, we're like supposed to be natural enemies where, you know, I don't want to bite you. And you, you have no, no feelings of wanting to stake me. And she's like, it depends on how long you keep. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which could be our mini burn for the week. Right. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but he even halfway sits up and she's still just sitting on him. Like, like okay. get up. <laughs> okay, Joan, I see you. I see. <laughs> Anya is trying to use a spell book, but all she's managed to do is replicate bunnies. <laughs> and she's up on a chair and she keeps and <laughs> Rupert is telling her to stop using that book. <laughs> and he's trying to be like so polite about it. Darling. So polite. Maybe this isn't the right book for us. <laughs> because is- he has found the t- the one way ticket in his pocket <laughs> to London, and he's figuring that things weren't going so well between right. him and Enya, so that's why he's leaving. He just hasn't told her yet. Mm-hmm. And the gang is in the tunnels with some vampires, and they're running from the vampires. They're having a bad time down there. They are. It's not going well for them, but. Willow and Tara are all snuggled up together, so that's you there's can tell lot. that there's genuine love there. Right. There's a lot of closeness, a lot of heavy breathing, a lot of, you know, like passing look like glance, look away, look away. Oh no. Oh no. That kind of thing. It's a little yep. sexy. It's a little sexy. Mm-hmm. That kind of, mm-hmm. I can't lie. And Willow uh Xander and Dawn are just kind of there. <laughs> yeah. Like they don't really have much to do. Uh, th- at some point, I think Dawn asks Willow how she's doing or d- vice versa. And uh, Willow admits she's like, you know, I'm hot and I'm sweaty and scared, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't seem unfamiliar to me. That seems like really like this is how life as usual. Mm-hmm. And I also think I'm a little gay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of gay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of what she said back in season. It's the same thing she right. said in Doppelgangland. Right. Which is pretty funny. Um, on top of about 200 bunnies running around the magic box, Anya, yeah, Anya working, her working her last nerve or his last nerve, and she has created a gray sky, a green sky, which I don't know why we're not more concerned about what's going on there. Right. And then Rupert is sword fighting a skeleton. Right. Which... <laughs> really? Your budget was that? That was the budget? Like, did you spend all the money on that shark head? Right. So there's like, we've got a weird green cloudy sky inside the magic box. And there's like a bajillion rabbits and a sword fighting skeleton. Mm -hmm. Finally. And I think at some point, something that roars (laughs) shows up. I don't don't know what it is or what it could be. But they're now cowered. And yeah, and Rupert are now cowered behind the counter. And finally, he blurts out, you know, basically... You're such an asshole. No wonder I'm leaving you. And <laughs> oh. like, beg your pardon. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> and 
says she tosses her her engagement ring mm-hmm. off to whatever creatures over there. And then she's really upset about it. I need my ring. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's gonna eat my ring now. One, the my only complaint with this episode is it's like a long build and then it's over rather quickly. Yeah, you know. So we've had this tension building this whole episode, and then it just kind of ends. So Alex accidentally steps on Willow's crystal and breaks it, and thus breaking the spell, which. I find it like he's wearing soft soled shoes, like tennis shoes. I don't know if that would have broken it. Just Not stuff. that hard ass rock. I, I mean, pretty hard rock. <laughs> I have one on my desk that's about this. It actually is pretty much the same size. Like that's right. yeah, pretty much the same size she had in her. There's no way I can't like no. There's no, no. way he could have stepped on that in some soft shoe tennis shoes. Right, accidentally no. stepping on, it. not stomping yeah. down on it, but just like kind of just walking on it. Yeah. So that happens. Um, but right before that, you know, Giles finally finds the right spell and uh, fixes everything, makes all the bad stuff go away. And then he and Anya or he and Anya make up. They sure do. <laughs> and then make out. They <laughs> sure do. <laughs> and I would think Giles would be more for these random spells happening around Sunnydale because that's the only time it seems when he gets some. Yeah. Is, uh, yep. cause I, like, I don't know. I don't remember what happened the first time Olivia came to visit, but I know she was there during Hush. She and... was there to visit. Yes. Yeah. Specifically there to visit. All right. But, you know, Olivia and Hush, like, uh, band candy with Joyce, and now this with Anya. I'm like, I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I, I kind of wish that somebody had spoken about this later. <laughs> later. I don't know why. <laughs> That, Giles can only get some in a Me Too movement and kind of No, 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 no. Like one of the characters had like like, like Anya had um revealed that they had made out or something to Xander or it's like once they oh. broke up, she had said something about how Giles is a better kisser than you or something like that. That would have been Yeah. A beautiful sh- it should have been brought up for sure. Right. Oh, I would have loved if they brought it up. <laughs> because he looked like he was he was putting in work. Right. Had the spell not been broken, Anya would like that, that countertop would have got waxed with Anya's ass. I'm just saying, like, shit would have gone really well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, spell's broken. And Will- things go Willow, bad right away. Like, yeah. So like Willow and Tara, like Tara is like basically in tears at this point. And they're just staring at each other and it's just like disbelief, like, like wow. I can't believe because they were about to kiss. Right, they were just like, about to kiss, and you could see her push her off of her. Yep, and she's just like fuck, like wow, and it's so much. Like she is hurt. Like Tara is deeply hurt by what happened, and then and again, it's another one of those moments where like the adults are have have to talk now because Xander and Dawn see what's happening, and they all realize what went down as well, and then like, okay, we're gonna go back to the magic box. We're just gonna, even though uh, Xander had to break the moment by laughing he giggled because he remembered the ending of what was it king ralph Ralph? yeah which is a john yes 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 i don't even i don't know if i saw it i know it existed i don't recall it being that funny too i can kind of see the video box like from going in the store when you know (laughs) i know i've passed by and seen the visual like Uh the poster or the video box but i don't think it's that funny that you had to interrupt that moment no and of no. course willow is like oh shit and she looks down and like there's a hole in her like you can yep. tell that her pocket busted open and the rock fell out dummy Link. and tara is standing there and willow's looking at her and it looks like willow wants to say something to her but tara's got her don't not right now right exactly not to nope there's nothing you can say there's zero that you could say right now like you basically like again you just fucked up you violated mm-hmm. tara's mind again and everyone else's put them in harm's way and it's <laughs> and speaking of harm's way you've got <laughs> rupert and anya are now back to giles and anya <laughs> and they wake up mid kiss and anya's eyes just like pop open <laughs> And they decide clean cleaning. <laughs> She's like, yes, yes. You need to 
feel she enjoyed that kiss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's still feeling it. She's like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> and then Spike and Buffy are actually in danger with the loan sharks because when they get their memory back, Buffy gets punched at the same time and then just she gets, gets her ass beat. She she gets her memory back and she's kind of in a daze, like and then she gets kicked in the face and I love it. It's so funny. Like I don't love that she got kicked in the face, but her reaction and everything that happens, it's very comical. <laughs> she's just like, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's Spike that he comes and kind of rescues her. And I love that Sharkhead's like, okay, okay, okay. As he is serious. Right. <laughs> we picked the wrong the wrong fight there. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can talk about this. Like, we don't need to cause all this drama. <laughs> it's like, like, you know what? I'll get you your damn kittens. I'm no welcher. <laughs> get out of here. <sighs> sure. And, and then Buffy. Mean. Mean. Oh, well, I was trying to think about like what must have, what must she be feeling at that moment? And it's probably just again, like, you know, she was feeling good. Like she was feeling great. Like maybe she was in some danger, didn't know who she was, but she didn't have her memory. She didn't have Buffy's memories. So yeah. she, everything was light for the most part for her. And then whoosh, everything just comes tumbling down. Like all of the grief in her life comes tumbling, crashing back at that moment. That's got to be overwhelming. And unfortunately, Spike is her kicking right. tool. She, She's like, he's the no, one that, yeah. I didn't do this. Right. <laughs> I have been the one that sits here and listens to you and it like lets you bounce ID, you know, your right. emotions off of. I'm not your whipping <laughs> boy. <sighs> and Tara has decided that this isn't going to work. <laughs> and she's out. And this, the end of this episode is like this whole episode was comedy, 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 comedy. Ow. Yeah. Sit on your neck, kick you in the crotch. Exactly. Yeah. It's just and like. It's and it's scored so well by this acoustic version of Michelle kicks, Branch's song. Yeah. I love this song. And especially this version when it kicks into like it starts off acoustic and then it kicks in at the end as a full band, which is great. Um, I think. Uh, Evanescence does something like that in their song "My Immortal," mm-hmm. but um, which surprisingly was never used in the show. No, <clears throat> um, but I do think this is the first, like, this is the beginning of several like big name stars <laughs> that show up in this season to like actually perform at, at the, the bronze. bronze, right? Because the bronze has suddenly become like P three <laughs> on charm. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Um, I am just impressed with Tara's ability to first and foremost fa- have boxes on the ready to like pack up her shit. And, she had a go bag and be <laughs> ready to like leave that night, man. Like yeah. seriously, oh, where are you going? And right. how are you getting there? Does she have a? She doesn't have a car. Mm-mm. It's like in the middle. I don't think she cares. <laughs> She's got her like, shit boxed up on the porch. Like deuces. That poor girl has had her memory messed with three times. Hmm. In less than a year, maybe. She's like, like that's not right. I'm over all of this. All right? Of this. <laughs> like, you have to go. And the only person that this really, really upsets as well, I guess, not the only person, but Dawn is devastated. Yeah, like an innocent bystander, basically. Like, yeah. Dawn, this is, like, really affecting Dawn in a very negative way, and, and she didn't deserve it. It's she, like her parents are breaking up. Right. Because she had really... Well, they were there taking care of her, basically. While Buffy for five was months, for half a right. year. And before, even before that, like she and Tara had a nice rapport, had a, a like a, a very cute little relationship happening. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, she's leaving. And Spike has come up to Buffy. Well, Giles is in his middle seat. So can, why can't your travel agent get you a better seat? Or is he in a window seat this time? I think he's in the middle seat and coach. Like, <laughs> Giles, you're a grown ass man. <laughs> a tall grown ass man on top right. of that. You should not be sitting in a middle seat. Right. Flying to London. You're not right. flying to like fucking Austin from right. California. <laughs> this is a long ass trans continental flight. Right. Yes, he's in the middle seat. Very much so. This is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why he looks so upset. Because I mean, really, what, what when you think about the last hour and what <laughs> happened not much happened to giles like no. Buffy's a little mad at him but she won't get over it yeah exactly 
he used to sit in that middle seat like this is some bullshit I didn't <laughs> fucking my memory got taken I got kissed a goddamn child I kind of liked it I need to get out of here and I'm in a middle seat for like the next 12 hours <laughs> he's upset he's very bitter about the whole thing but Buffy is at the bronze by herself not for some drinking reason. Not drinking, <laughs> just sitting all pissed <laughs> off. Sitting at the bar, at the bar, taking up space and real estate, but not spending any money. That's looking what I'm sad about. as fuck, too. Like, I've never seen anyone look so sad. Like, I'd be so, I'd be there like Xander, like, bad day with the lighter. Like, <laughs> that's how sad she looks. And, of course, Spike comes up, wants to, like, engage, and he just looks at her like, I'm here for you. And she's, she's like, just, oh! bitch <laughs> she just like turns her head like 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 the most blatant like without saying a word just turns her head away from Huff it too like <laughs> and it's like you know what you know what <laughs> and he does that too with his tongue too you right. can see uh-huh okay oh, all right <laughs> yep oh, gotcha fuck you bitch fine <laughs> walks off he walks off but he doesn't leave no clearly i want to know how far he actually got right before yeah, how long like, it took her to be like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> I know I I'm doing nothing. <laughs> a little bit better. Oh, <laughs> it might make me feel a little bit better. Little Spikes bit. hung down my throat. Mm-hmm. That was... <laughs> so, like, Tara, we we go back to the house. Tara leaves. She tries to comfort Dawn. Dawn runs upstairs all upset. Dawn, Tara you know, looks. <laughs> that's not, that wasn't right. No. She, she didn't have to treat her like that. Right. So then we go back to the bronze and we're panning around the bronze looking for something. And what do we find? Buffy and Spike going at it under a staircase. Like for real, for real. Like for real. Even people around the bronze are like, well, damn. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, it's like, you know, it's not uncommon to see folks like making out at a club or whatnot, but it just seems too well lit for this. Right. <laughs> too well, like, it's pretty bright in there. Like, that's right. just, you like, should at least look going at it. Down. <laughs> <laughs> the way y'all are going at it, it's just like, I mean, damn. Like, it's, right. <laughs> this sound takes us back to his right crypt, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and that's my question is how long does this go on? Because, again, <laughs> The right. next episode, we're going to spend talking about this. No, she's like, fuck you. I imagine. It's like a couple of kisses. <laughs> right. I imagine it probably went down for like maybe. Because, I mean, you can't. <sighs> How uncomfortable. But then what? He probably actually thought they were going back to his crypt. And she right. was like, bye. Right. And she just like took off, I'm sure. Like, it was maybe like a 15 minute makeout session or something. Because I can't imagine it lasting any longer than that. In no. It ass bronze in the middle of the room. Right. Up. They weren't even sitting down. They weren't even drunk. <laughs> so, no. I imagine she punched him in the face and ran off. Right. Because <laughs> that's how they do it. Exactly. He most definitely got punched in the face and then she mm-hmm. ran off. <laughs> oh, but it is one of my favorite episodes and uh let's see we got bodies dropped Mm -hmm. there were a lot of vampires two by buffy three by spike one by xander oh yeah i didn't realize there was anything there yeah does it pass the back up test i said i mean if we again it's always very like very very small, like very, like barely. Uh, By the hair like, of their chinny chin chin. If we want to count Willow and Tara and Anya talking about Buffy, and, and Buffy they, and Dawn yeah. talking about themselves, right? So yeah, ish. Random trivia: mm-hmm. the tweed suit worn by Spike is the same one he wore in Xander's dream in Restless. When he's on the swing. When he's on the swing, and he says that. Rupert's like a father figure to him. Oh, that's that's cute. I like Isn't that. that cute. And the neighborhood that Buffy and Spike are finding in at the end of the episode is the Desperate Housewives set. Huh. And it was also used for the Burbs. With Tom. Uh, yeah, with Tom Hanks. Nice. The tram ride at Universal Hollywood actually takes you through that Desperate Housewives <gasps> neighborhood. So I'm wondering if it was filmed at Universal Hollywood. Oh, I've driven through there. And if I'd have known that, I'd have cared a little bit more. Because <laughs> <coughs> I feel like it's very 
either be right before or right after the section where the guy chases you, the Norman Bates chases you from the Bates motel, which actually freaked me out. Cause he like really chases after the tram with a knife and you're like unnecessary. Right. That's uncool. Especially if you didn't know you were on the base. Like, if you were looking out this side of the train right. and all of a sudden you see some dude running after you with your knife, you're like, does anybody else see that? Anyone else concerned about this? Um, excuse me, driver. I would very right. much like you to accelerate this train. Right? Is this part of the thing? I, nobody told me murder was part of the thing. <laughs> and so our moral of the story, I'm about to get real deep on everybody. Snap. Oh, no snap. When your friends and loved ones are telling you that you have a problem, don't assume that you can handle it that you'll be fine and you can quit whenever you want. Obviously you can't. And obviously the people in your life care about you and are trying to tell you how they feel and how your behavior is affecting them. Well said. Yes. That's a great point. Thank you. If only Willow would have followed it. (sighs) It gets so much worse. So much worse. But yet again, so yes. All right. So next week is smashed, which this is like, the the next four, I think it mm-hmm. is, are, are like some of my favorite ones in this list. A nice chunk. Like yes. if I were to only watch like four episodes of Buffy, it would probably be like, you know, it'd start with once more with feeling and then this one and then this, the next one and the one after that. Yep. Because these are so- yeah, Tabula Rasa, smashed, wrecked, wrecked. and gone. Yeah. The thing <laughs> very... Very much, very fun on our end because oh, yeah. we love we love to uh, go on and on and on and on and on and on about these next few episodes, <laughs> especially wrecked, like smashed. The next one, there's a little bit of key mm. factor for us, but wrecked. Yeah, dude. Wrecked is a we're gonna call that one an NC seventeen episode. <laughs> Absolutely, because I think they may have actually should have probably made it at yeah. least a TVMA, dude. Like fucking zipper. Right, <laughs> and that was the end of Smashed. We were just like, right, exactly. Did I t- did I hear that? Going about- <laughs> that was that was how we sounded when it actually exactly. <laughs> like <laughs> the octaves went very very high mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> in that original viewing of that. I episode. can't wait to talk about it. Oh God! All right, y'all. So um, let us know if you have thoughts on Tabula Rasa, and you can send us an uh, MP3 file less than a minute and email it to revisiting Sunnydale at gmail dot com, or you can just talk to us on the Facebook page uh, revisiting Sunnydale, or on Twitter at Back to Sunnydale, or you can catch me, Camila, on Twitter at the underscore rugged angel, or me, Marcella at Sphere seven three three eight. All right, friends. Um, Thanks for listening, and until next time. Don't kill black and brown people. Amen.